Hi guys, thank you for tuning in. I wanted to spend a couple of minutes and just talk about earwax with you. A few years ago, the world's largest association of ENT physicians, which is the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery, actually pooled its resources and came together with some guidelines for cleaning out the ears and exactly what to use. The number one take home message is please don't use Q-tips. Let me show you why. If you're going to use Q-tips in your ear, you're much more likely to cause problem rather than do any good over the long haul. And sometimes those problems can be permanent and very damaging. Let me show you how we clean out ears here in the office. This is a basic model of the ear. We have here the familiar parts of the ear, the outside ear or the external ear. The ear then goes in through the ear canal, which runs about almost two inches or so in length up to the eardrum. The area of the eardrum, of course, is where a lot of the important hearing starts. The eardrum's connected to some fine bones in the middle ear called the ossicles, which eventually terminate down in the hearing receiver part where the nerve endings are called the cochlea. We can get earwax, debris, dirt, fungus infections, etc., that accumulate in the ear canal area here that we all classically have been told or maybe want to try to go after with a Q-tip. As we see, the Q-tip really doesn't have a lot of wiggle room once it gets into the ear canal and therefore really does not have any ability to scoop anything out. In fact, more than likely, it will pack things in further into the ear canal and sometimes may even touch the eardrum or even rupture or poke through the eardrum, causing a lot of problems. So here's an ear canal with a little bit of debris in it, such as earwax. You see that when we pack this in with a Q-tip, the earwax really has not much choice but to get farther and farther packed in. We really don't have the ability to scoop or clear things out. Now, when you come to an otolaryngologist's office, what we really prefer to do are use some more precise instruments to try to suction the earwax out, such as with suction instruments of various sizes. We have all different kinds here. Uh, we also have little devices to grasp the earwax that have little endings on them to basically go in and grasp portions of the earwax for retrieval. Uh, and finally, we all use these little wax curettes from time to time, which basically can easily pass into the ear canal. And as you see, we can gently debride the ear canal of the wax without doing any of that dangerous and potentially damaging packing that a Q-tip might do. Many people may also wash their ears out at home using peroxide or mineral oil or other substances. This is usually okay, as long as you don't have any ear tubes in place or any prior damage to your eardrum. Make sure it's okay with your doctor before you do something like this. And most people who do wash their ears out know that sometimes their ears can remain congested with some of the peroxide or the oil that may be left over afterwards. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Please remember if you're gonna clean your own ears out at home, do not use Q-tips or other devices poking them down blindly deep into the ear canal. It can be quite dangerous and can cause a lot more harm. If you're having trouble getting wax out of your ears or if it's not clearing naturally, bring this up with your general doctor or even see an ear doctor of your choice.